Hello, good morning. Welcome to Join News Today. Join News Desk. We are coming to live from our studios in Kokom Limiri on DTT because we're free to on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125. Coming up this morning, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata to present the 2024 budget this morning amidst concerns of the introduction of new taxes. We'll bring you details as senior economist warns government against reversing the gains made in the IMF program we are live in Parliament for details of that budget this morning also government says it will be difficult to pay the newly agreed 23 percent increment in base pay for the 2024 working year after yielding to the demands of labor unions so the 23 percent I am told even brings a budget over around like 3.7 billion and 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 this is huge you know so explaining all this to labor they have to get as to how finance will be able to fi finance this is one thing all of us are looking more as the union say they will not condone any delays with the implementation of the agreed wages we are also live in parliament this morning we'll bring you details plus business shortly please stay for details <music> This morning, the Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, will present the 2024 budget in Parliament. The budget is expected to cover all sectors of the economy with particular emphasis on revenue generation and expenditure cuts in some areas to stimulate growth. But even before the fine details of the budget are put out, the minority is warning government against the introduction of new taxes. It hints the Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, intends to raise 12 billion cities in revenue as part of the budget but the minority side says it will not allow this to go through listen to former minority leader Harun Idris who is also asking the finance minister to review existing taxes to give the private sector some breathing space that would have for Ghanaians tomorrow would have been to announce that he has reached an agreement with external creditors in order that he'll be able to save some 10.5 billion US dollars out of the 29 billion US dollars external debt. That will give him some fiscal space. But tomorrow, he's more likely to say that I'm, I'm near conclusion with external creditors, including China and Paris Club, on closure on this matter, which has become a requirement of the IMF for the release of the 600 million US dollars bailout out to add up to the initial 600 million US dollars, which was uh, released earlier. I think that we need the 600 million US dollars badly before the end of November. So, Daniel should expect a review of fiscalization. Uh, uh, now, we must also, as a country, all of us, including those of us in the NDC, must begin looking for answers as to how to deal with the continuous depreciation of the city. We need to work to expand exports. We need to work to preserve foreign exchange in this country. Many of you have not looked at the mathematics. I mean, if you took 3 million US dollars as a business in 2021, that was 18 million Ghana cities. Today, the same 3 million dollars is 30 million Ghana cities. What activity or project can give you profitability to be able to uh, amortize this particular loan? So, like the state, if you are servicing 29 billion US dollars at an exchange rate of 6 cities to 8 cities, it's now 12 uh, cities. What revenue measure can give you enough resources to contain this? This is the country's nemesis. Our economic nemesis is arresting the depreciation of the city, not in Baumier's way. 
I've been joined by an associate professor of economics at the economics department of the University of Ghana, Professor Ebo Texan. I'm grateful for your time, Professor. One thing is for sure we look forward to seeing this in this budget is how government will be reducing the public debt and generating more revenue internally. But what we are uncertain about is how government is going to do this. What ideally should be the path in terms of strengthening the economy? I mean, uh, thank you, Aisha. Good morning to your viewers and listeners. I I think that it's important for us um, now to do what we call fiscal consolidation. In other words, to reduce the extent to which we overrun our budget in, in terms of the deficit, because it's the deficit that will lead us on to go and borrow to fund that deficit. And we've mentioned this over the years that <clears throat> there's so much revenue you can collect up to a point, but if you want to cut down on the extent to which you borrow, then you need to take a look at your expenditure. And so as we speak, we will be expecting to find out the ways in which government is going to detail out how it's going to rationalize its expenditure, whilst at the same time ensuring that it is investing in the growth centers of the economy. Because once the economy grows, our debt to GDP ratio declines we raise more revenue, we can be able to pay for our debts when we borrow. So it's important that the sort of commitments that we made to the fund in going for their support in terms of expenditure rationalization and then ex increasing our revenue, not necessarily introducing new taxes, but making our revenue collection efforts more efficient, reducing our tax exemptions, and also introducing such levies that are not going to punish the productive sector. If you remember last year or so, the government introduced a production tax, which we already knew to be a consumption tax in terms of the NHIL GET Fund. These were taxes that were treated like value-added taxes that uh, producers could take out as their inputs VAT. But the government came up with a policy that prevented the producers from taking that input VAT. We have to give it back to them for them to take the input VAT so that it becomes a consumption tax. But then what we need to do also is to find a way in which we can tax the almost 10.7 million structures that we have in Ghana. Supposing even 7 million of them are taxable, and we collect on average 1,500 property rates, 1,500 cities per year for the properties that we have, that will give us over a billion dollars. That alone will be enough to support our budget huge amount of money support our budget. And so it is important that we look at how we are going to rake in more revenue without introducing any new sales tax that is going to affect the productive sector. Take away some of them that are already affecting them in negative ways. Become more efficient at collect collection of taxes and then rationalize our expenditure. We need to take a second look at the public sector wage bill. Clean it off the ghost names and also ask ourselves the question of whether all enterprises that are paid by government, if the government cannot win some of them off its payroll. Public sector universities charging 1,700 school fees for a whole academic year for a university student, too low. Can we increase it? We know there are political economy issues, but can we increase it a bit so that the universities can collect enough to fund the cost of training the young men and women at the tertiary level so that the government subventions can reduce a bit to free some fiscal space for the government to use that to provide the infrastructure that the productive sector needs. So these are choices that only the government can decide. 
Is it possible to realign some of the ministries, cut down on the executive? I've heard people say that, look, it will not bring in any much revenue. But it sends a signal in effect that the government is doing something about its own executive size and then cuts it down on, on, on that aspect of the expenditure. It is. Then also, we need to ensure that whatever goods and services that government procures, we get value for money. Our national procurement laws were meant to ensure that Ghana was going to benefit from value for money purchases by the public sector. As, as we speak, I don't think that is the case. There are situations in which government is having to pay for goods that are on the market five to ten times the value. That is not efficiency. So we need to take a look at these things because we don't need to introduce new taxes. I mean, the Ghanaian public are already fed up with, with especially the productive sector. The vehicle luxury tax that we came up with, that we took away, is it possible to, to see our best, those who carry these huge cars with these big engines, pay something for us to put into the road fund to, to build our road infrastructure? Can we digitize the road tolls in such a way that people can even pay with their mobile phones and have access to these roads that are being put in good conditions to reduce the accidents that we have on the roads. Because don't forget that one of the reasons why we've not been able to bring down food inflation, irrespective of however successful our culture is, is the transportation costs. Are we going to be able to build the road infrastructure from the farm gate to the markets to reduce the cost of transportation of these goods to the markets? Because that's the only way we can bring down the food inflation. And so these are the choices that we need to make to ensure that we do not get into the conditions that we, we found ourselves in last year. It's and already we have seen the benefits of what we've started. And um, we see inflation declining. We've seen our growth higher than we expected it. And so our city has, has stabilized. So we need to continue these efforts, but we don't need to introduce new taxes that will be a nuisance to the private sector. Prof, it's important that you talk about the revenue versus expenditure because it's been a big conversation we've had. All we want is a cut in government expenditure, as, especially as we get into an election year. But it's actually obvious expenditure will rise rather than decrease. I mean, what's the danger if that happens? Well, if that happens, we cannot do the fiscal consolidation that we expect. And I, I think that the fund should insist because there is going to be zero financing from the central bank. That is certainly going to happen. So I do not expect that this government would run a huge expenditure. We need to cut on certain things. We need to nationalize the expenditure. We need to align some of the ministries. I mean, some of the ministries have two, three ministers. Deputy Minister, do we need them? I mean, these are the times that we need to make those difficult choices that would ensure that whatever gains we are seeing from the support that we're getting for the fund, whether it's credibility or the Gold for Reserves program by the Central Bank, we've seen that things are getting a little bit better. We need to sustain it. And it has to come with choices. We should forget about the election year. Look, if we are not going to break, break the political business cycle, it's going to be business as usual, then I'm, I'm very sure that we are going to get into a much worse situation than we find ourselves. And it's important that the government will look beyond the elections and ensure that it puts Ghana on the path of the recovery, sustaining what we have seen now, and recover the economy to the levels that we expect it to be. That's very, very important. Prof. Botex, and I'm grateful for your time. He's a professor of economics at the Economics Department at the University of Ghana. In the studio, our in-house data analyst and a member of research desk, Kofi J has joined me. Kofi, I, I want us to do uh, a comparison I mean, of all the budgets we've had, especially that of last year, which is leading us into uh, the new one. Uh, first, how did the 2023 budget fare? Well, so this is a budget that uh, probably had a first taste of the IMF program 
because you got the IMF, you know, uh, program approved in May 2023. The budget was read in November 2022. So by the time we, were, we got to July 31st, government had done a lot of revisions uh, in the media budget review where we saw a number of the macroeconomic targets being revised downwards. So, and, and some even revised upwards. So if you look at inflation targeting, for instance, we were hoping to end the year a little above 18% in 2023. Now we are hoping to go a little above 31%. But the good news is that for the past three months, we've seen inflation come down uh, from somewhere 51.4% when it peaked in December 2022 to now 35.2%. It's good news for government. Uh, but on the other side, there were other targets that we were hoping to actually get the fiscal space that we were hoping to get both from the domestic debt exchange program and then as well the external debt restructuring, which currently we have not seen the magnitude of the progress that government has actually done in terms of the restructuring at the external level. But the data looks good for government. If you look at expenditure, for instance, I'm looking at the appropriation uh -huh. and then also considering the provisional data given by the finance ministry itself. There's some sort of good news for the finance ministry uh, because if you look at the first half of 2023, uh -huh. government was hoping to spend some 110 billion Ghana CDs. The provisional data that we have currently shows government has now spent 81 versus the 110 they were hoping to spend uh, in the first half of 2023. That's good news. Mm -hmm. And we, are, we know that this is stemming from the fact that we've done DDP, we have the fiscal space, we are not really paying the interest on loans. Some of the principal payments has actually been postponed and we are hoping to do so at the external level. Now, let me also go through the revenue aspect in terms of the tax revenue and all of those things. Just like Prof said, government is hoping to now consolidate some of the gains that is actually chalked in the first half and then also uh, probably at the dying embers of the year, mm. uh, hoping that they will end the year with the inflation target or even fall below that. Yeah. And growth as well, growth has actually gone beyond what we actually projected. But some key economic indicators, like some of the taxes that we will be going through, you see that um, even if you look at the um, total exports that we gain from the exportation of the export of cocoa, um, crude oil, and then even uh, a gold, it has actually dropped. Because mm -hmm. let me fetch the data. If you look at last year, between January and August 2022, yeah. by the eighth month, we had gained in terms of total exports from these three and other um, commodities, $11.8 billion. Mm. That was what we generated in the first eight months of 2022 fiscal year. Okay. If you compare the same thing to what we have currently, mm. 2023 is dropped by almost more than a little over $1 billion. So we've moved from $11.8 billion to now $10.8 billion, mm. almost a billion dollar actually a reduction there. And this yeah. is actually coming from oil exports that we could not probably meet the same thing that we exported in 2023. So we've dropped from that $3.8 billion in the first eight months of 2022 to now $2.4 billion. Let's look at the tax components and expenditure bracket. Mm. What was the target and how are we faring? So now let, let's, let's compare, for instance, the what we program to get in the first, the first and second quarter, which is given as the first half of the year, because mm -hmm. that's what we have provisional data for. Yeah. So the finance ministry projected that by the first half of 2023, they should raise some 49.6 billion Ghana CDs. Mm. Currently, currently, as we speak, the provisional data that we have shows 47.8. Mm. So there's that variance of about 2 billion Ghana CDs that we've not actually it's provisional data anyway. So, but if you look at uh, VAT, for instance, some good news. If you look at VAT, VAT, the first half of 2023, we're hoping to get 10.8 uh, billion Ghana cities. Now we've been able to raise a little above 11.3 billion. That's mm -hmm. good news for government. Mm -hmm. But another tax revenue that's probably not really performing um, as we projected is the e levy. And if you look at it, 
This will be the second time in a row after that it was actually introduced in 2020, uh, 2022 that it's not really performing the way we wanted it to perform. So the first target was 7 billion in 2020, a little close to 7 billion in 2022. Mm. Now we are looking at getting about 800 million Ghana CDs. And if you look at the data, the provisional data that the, the finance ministry themselves have put out for the first half, the first half of the year, you see that what we actually projected to get is way below what we actually have for the for the first half. So mm -hmm. some um, 982 million Ghana cities, that was what we we're projecting to get. But provisional data shows we did not get anywhere close to this value of 982. We now have 455 million Ghana cities. So if you look at how the budget has fared in 2023, uh, a revision in the supplementary budget of mm -hmm. our revenue target, that means that we could not meet the target that we wanted to uh, mm -hmm. we 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 targeted okay, yeah. for 2023 um what does it mean for the 2024 budget so one 2023 budget that was the first time that we saw ghana's total expenditure you know move or creep into the 200 billion zone yeah. ghana cities now you have 2024 budgets coming up where we have to do a lot of expenditure cuts Government, they've already taken the lead by cutting some of ex expenditure. Mm -hmm. People are saying they should go ahead and cut more. There's also the revenue side that we are trying to revamp. But if you look at what we have versus um, some of the data that we, we've seen so far, in terms of base pay that has actually been increased uh, by up to 25% in 2024, all of these things are supposed to put a lot of pressure on the compensation bit of the expenditure because mind you if not for the debt restructuring and whatever that we've done we were supposed to pay uh, close to about 50 billion ghana cities in terms of debt servicing alone at both the external and the domestic level so once government has the free space to breathe at the domestic level and is hoping to do so at the external level mm. then you know that the expenditure will actually reduce government can now have the space to now accommodate that 23, 25% promise that they've given to labor that they are going to increase, um, um, how do you call it, the, the base pay. We've also seen the minimum wage also rising. And, and I'm looking at the compensation bit of the, exp um, of the expenditure line item because just two line items, interest payment and compensation to employees, usually, usually they account for more than 50% and, of, and, and in this case, they've had to go above the threshold, especially mm. when they were uh, negotiating yeah. the base pay. Yeah. The minister says that they were looking forward to uh, reaching an agreement of 19%. 19%. Now they've had to give in to the 23% demand. Yeah. How they're going to fund that, he says it will be difficult. Mm. So definitely must find a way into the budget. And mind you, next year is an, ele an election, election year. year. Yeah. That's what a lot of people dread. Uh, mm -hmm. It's definitely not going to be different from the yeah. other years, yeah. right? The yeah. other election if, years. If you look at what Labour actually put out yesterday, listening to some of the conversation, it actually took the finance minister to come to the negotiation table and spread the data and show them that, look, if we go beyond this threshold, we may not be able to afford it. So let's come to equilibrium. We know Labour started from... 120 percent that was what they were looking, looking for. for government started from 10 so look at the huge variance yeah but thankfully they were able to come to that equilibrium of the 23 to 25 percent in the 2024 fiscal year so huge um you know line items on our expenditure going forward in 2024 since government has decided to but we did it last year 30 percent a year before was seven seven percent in 2022 how government is actually going to convince IMF to actually accommodate this 23 to 25 percent? I, I know it's within their, their means to do that because they actually consider a whole lot of things before reaching this. But we are hoping that 
uh, the implementation will not be a challenge. As a challenge as which would market. have effects on other exactly. sectors. Let's now cross over to Parliament where the House is set in anticipation of the delivery of the 2024 budget by the Finance Minister Ken Oforiata. Parliamentary Correspondent Kwekwa Sante and uh, George Riafe with the business team are standing by for us. Let me start with you, Kweku. Uh, is the House set uh, in waiting for the Finance Minister? Is he in the House as we speak? Well, yes, Aisha, the Finance Minister is expected to be here in Parliament any moment from now. In fact, if you look back on the chamber, you'd see that a number of MPs have now taken their seats, which shows that very soon we expect the Finance Minister to come in. In fact, I've seen the minority, the majority leadership, some of them coming in. The minority leadership have not arrived yet, but the expectation is that they will come in soon. My understanding was that this morning there was a caucus meeting to sort of, sort of discuss the, the, the minority position on some of the things that they have they, they had heard um, coming into this. But I have your joy business editor, George Jaffe, to give us some understanding of what we expected to see. George, in terms of information, what have you been able to glean in terms of what we should expect today? I think that anybody that has doubts in his mind about the direction of this uh, budget, you should just do a quick run on the IMF program and what will be the main focus. Later when we reported this in the us two weeks ago about the, the budget being influenced by the IMF program, just yesterday the Ministry of Finance issued a statement more of confirming that this program or this budget to be influenced by the fund program and what is the fund program trying to do trying to reduce our debt situation and also mobilize more revenue and i think that's one thing that will be of interest to a lot of people i think that the fund has maintained that we are still not raising the required revenue to to match our expenditure or if you're looking at the size of the economy it appears that from government side they differ and so if you're supposed to raise more revenue then what would be the approach? You are either going on the tangent of being efficient in collection and all the rest and roping the tax net. I heard the tax net argument far back when I was in primary school. It looks like that hasn't worked. If you're looking for a short-term solution, a more secured source of improving the situation, that is where the argument about raising some tax rates and even introducing new taxes to deal with this gap you heard the minority confirming that when the minister met them, he just gave them a fair idea about raising almost about the 12 billion I stand to be counted. Tax efficiency, tax more being aggressive, may not be able to raise that amount of money for I stand to be corrected again within one year. That confirms what we have also picked up that there is a likelihood that the minister might have to introduce some new taxes. But again, the caveat here is that we've, we've known in the past where even an hour before budget, certain statements are drawn and replaced. So you also don't want to rule out whether when they test the port, being a political season, an election year, maybe it might not be good. So they might review some of these taxes. So that is something that we should expect or not rule out. Again, you look at the, the fund program, Government say that they want to expand the economy. Now, when you expand the economy, it has an implication on our debt situation, debt GDP ratio, and all the rest. So, they will be coming with this growth and prosperity program that they believe that would aid in the expansion of the economy, support private sector to also grow. Because if government is not expanding that much, maybe the whole idea is that can the private sector be supported so they can also help in the expansion of the economy so expect something in that area so but hopefully if you look at the fund program and what it's looking at that will basically shape the direction of this budget going forward for next year you, you, you've you've said a lot about the imf deal being the 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 anchor for yeah. this budget yeah Recently, there's been a lot of talk about Ghana and the IMF relation. Mm -hmm. In terms of the information you are getting, are we on the right track to get the next 600 million? And the kind of information that have come out, the finance ministry have put out a statement. Actually, the banking reports that they, they, they had missed a certain deadline. Of course, um, joining you had stood their ground in terms of the reporting and all that. In terms of what you are getting, are we able to get this money as soon as possible because the board is set to meet in terms of how crucial it is for this budget? If, if you look at or if you pay closely to the fund, the board is going to meet on November 22nd to look at the second tranche coming in. 
And for me, when you get close to these board meeting, you just put your ears on the ground, the body language and all the rest. We understand that right now, what the board is just looking for is that memorandum of understanding, the no objection, so that they will go ahead and meet. Again, just like what happened in the first tranche, the body language from the fund and everything suggests that we are likely to get the approval from the fund. It appears that the engagement with the bilateral creditors, the, 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 the G20 group and all the rest, it, it appears it's going well. And it looks like very soon that MOU that they released to say that we have no objection, discussions have gone well and Ghana is going to get. So again, I, I, engaging the fund of record, the body language, the communication from them seem to suggest that when the board meets on November 22, they are going to give their no objection and approve the staff report that the staff put together when they came to Ghana here and release that next tranche of funds for us to get the money. So that is again what we are picking up and it suggests that we are on track in terms of the program. If you follow the program, you realize that changes are done to how things are done and all the rest meeting the test date and all those things, the bilateral agreement and all the rest. And again, from what I have picked up, it appears that we are on track to meet all these targets and to get that MOU from the bilateral creditors that will go to the board and the board to meet. And unless something happens in the last minute, it appears that we are on track to get this money from the IMF. So the finance minister had told the finance committee and according to the minority that he's seeking to raise about 12 billion Ghana cities and that is just about one billion dollars. That, that is what we expected the E-Levy to raise for instance. Harun Idrisu speaking just a few days ago talked about reviewing some of the existing taxes. Do you think that there is space within the fiscal policy or government to review existing taxes at all or remove any at all? Uh, I, government might want to review the taxes, but also you want to look at the ability to pay. If you gauge the pulse of businesses out there, there is this whole thing about tax fatigue. They feel that they are being strangled is the same businesses that are paying the tax. So yes, but if you again, I, I look at the, there's an organization of tax agencies around the world, which Ghana is part of. And Apple, going through that data, it is not true that, no, it is not true that Ghana is the lowest in the region when it comes to our tax GDP ratio. We are actually doing far better than several countries in the South region. Apparently, even for last year alone, in terms of growth in tax collections, Ghana re re recorded about 2% or so, far better than other countries. So the whole argument that we are not raising the required revenue and taxes, if you go through that data, it doesn't back that argument. So there is a problem about the ability to pay and whether the environment is right to put in these things. Yes, of course. E-Levy is a typical example about why consensus should be built when we are putting out these tax measures. From the academia, to the experts, to the analysts, they all raised questions about the structure of this tax and whether it's going to work. So if this government is a listening government, they should go back and look at the problems that happened pre-introduction of e-levy and what it went through. And for if these businesses are saying that they cannot pay these taxes, I think it's just have to listen to them. Yeah. <clears throat> so Aisha, that is the situation here in Parliament. I'm just calling an MP to join us here very shortly so that we can have an understanding of what exactly they are getting. But George, of course, giving us a certain fundamental of what we are to expect. Of course, we must put on the record that the minority have been insisting that they will not be part of the introduction of any new taxes. What would that mean? They have 137 MPs. Are they able to reject any tax measure on the floor if the majority side is able to marshal all its numbers to come out to the floor? That is key. But I want to go back to George again and talk about the, the, the view on the economy. There is so much riding on credibility of the economy and the credibility in the economy. Do you, do you, do you think that some of the rhetoric coming from the minority about hampering government's ability to raise revenue is something that is going to affect us even in terms of our, our bilateral creditors because they are trying to forgive you, they are trying to help you and then they hear locally that some of your partners, including your position, are saying that they are not going to help you raise any revenue. What signal does that send outside? I, I think that what happened with E-Levy will sometimes tell you how government sometimes may do whatever they have to do to have their way. So in terms of what the minority thinks, 
the minority will talk all right, but when it comes to the final thing to be done, would they approve or disapprove of it? But don't forget that for these external partners in the credit, they are looking at your data. If you look at the macro numbers, we've seen some stability, whichever way you want to look at it. And for, for them, that is very, very important. Are we seeing that stability? Inflation. They are having projections that we might end the year at about 27%, far lower than the 13 29% that the Bank of Ghana has projected. Yeah. And what is going to feed into that? Don't forget that going to next year as well, some extra measures are going to come in to try and lower the inflation down. So they are going to look at the macro numbers and also look at government actions in terms of, because even though we are raising revenue, it is still not enough to fund government's expenditure. Can government scale back on expenditure to deal with that? Maybe yes. So if you look at the number for them, even though the minority will raise concerns, they look at the end of the day, what will happen? Has government been able to give them the assurance that they will get the minority to come on their side? Mm. It's a give and take. Maybe if government is able to scale back on certain things, the minority will then come on board to support these whole tax measures. But for me, the argument is that e-levy challenges should be a guiding principle in whatever tax measure that government would want to introduce in the 2024 budget. Yeah. George making the point about how crucial it is for the government to actually look at the challenges that the e-levy faced before they introduce any new, uh, any new taxes. George, thank you. I'll come back to you shortly. But I have a member of parliament who is coming to join me to discuss some of the key issues that have been happening over the past few, over the past few weeks. And uh, he will give us some understanding of what exactly the understanding they have in terms of what exactly is going to happen. So, Honorable, in terms of what you are listening, are we expected to see new taxes? Do you have any confirmation on that? Not yet, but clearly what, what, what I'm expecting is to hear something that is going to help us fight our climate change. And, and I think looking at the emissions that we are seeing nowadays across both vehicles and our industry, we don't have heavy industries anyway, but obviously there are some emissions that we need to start tackling them from now. And I'm sure there should be something in there for that. Mm. That, that is Paul Chumberima, the M MP for Doma East. Of course, some of the name, one of the persons who have been tipped to, to partner Dr. Mahmoud Baumia into the 2024 election. The conversation are ongoing, and I'm sure we can have that conversation at a later time. But already we've heard from your colleagues in the NDC who say they are not going to support any new taxes, who say that if government is to introduce any measures that is going to impoverish the ordinary Ghanaian, they are going to fight back. Do you sense that you and your colleagues on the majority side have the appetite, like you fought during E-Levy, to stand by government to shepherd this economic policy through to be able to get anything? Obviously, if it is something good that is going to help the country, we will support it. But, you see, I don't expect the finance minister to introduce any tax that is going to burden any Ghanaian at this moment. I am confident. I'm, I'm aware that certain taxes are going to be scrapped or some are going to be reduced. I mean, I'm aware that even taxes on on sanitary parts and other things are going to be um, taken off in terms of agricultural machinery and other things. So clearly, we are on course of not burdening any Ghanaian at this moment. However, there are certain areas also that if we think, like climate change, is a main issue across the globe. So, climate change is so important when there are ordinary Ghanaians who think they can't even get food to eat. When, climate change is good, when, but is it something when, you want to do when, now? When the environment is going to wipe away the average Ghanaian, then we need to protect the environment to yeah, keep the Ghanaian. Some will so tell you that Ghanian. we are not there yet as a country. Oh no, we are Look there. at the bread and butter emissions. matters first. Emissions. Bread and butter. No, emissions. Bread and butter. No, emissions. No, bread and butter. No, emissions. Yeah. Emissions are critical to us. For me, if we, if we go to the United Kingdom, you know there are some part they call the congestion area or the emission zone. Now, immediately, immediately you get to that place, you pay tax, some sort of taxes are there. Those things for me, I think we should introduce it in our, our country. Because there are some cars that if you see, and some industries that we see, and the kind of emissions that they produce, and even when you're in traffic, the kind of thing. I mean, clearly, you can see that the average Ghanaian at one point may not be able to take care of him or herself. So, obviously, that is also going to burden the economy. How, so, we need, to, we need to wait, but I don't expect any taxes that are going to burden Ghana. It, it's, it's going to be a stability and development growth budget. And I don't expect my my other colleagues to be worried about going to bed again. It can't be, it shouldn't be. Be Before you go back to the chamber, this weekend you expected to go to Rock City, but now that has been cancelled. <laughs> you have to do the post-budget workshop here in Parliament because the people say you need to be able to cut down on expenditure. You're, you are the elected representatives. They want to see 
that you are tightening your belt just like everybody else. Do you think that you can have a successful post-budget workshop within the vicinity of parliament? Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? Mm. I, I support the fact that, yes, if we are not going anywhere, we should do it here. Obviously, that is one part of the process that's showing Ghanaians that we are all part of the of, of cutting, tightening our bed. So, I think we should have a very good one and, and, and it's going to be good. All right. Thank you very much. That is Paul Chumberima, the Member of Parliament for, for, for the Mar East. And um, um, George, George Rafi will be back with me in, in, in a moment. So, that is the situation here in terms of the, 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 the persons and what they expect that they want to be seen done. The Honourable Member is confirming to us that. There may be new taxes, but he does not expect that those taxes will overburden the Ghanaian public. Before we hand over back to the studio, George, the MP tells us that he expects some taxes to go off or in terms of some rage again, like the tax on sanitary parts, for instance. But generally, what sense have you gotten and what kind of outlook is this budget going to show? I think that I can confirm on the sanitary part as well. Um, it might be a give and take. So you have a situation where some taxes should be taken off because I understand that the Association of Ghana Industries has also pushed very hard on this for it to be scrapped. So the tax on sanitary tax indeed will be scrapped. But you could also look at taxes being done in other areas as well. So yes, of course, they are, they are, they, I mean, they are, it's confirming or earlier reports that government will be reviewing some of the tax measures maybe let's say review tax measures more firmed up to raise that 12 billion that is looking at and, and let's see those growth pro uh, programs that they'll be putting out because government is also very interested about how can they support the private sector as well to grow so whilst they are putting in the taxes there will also be some incentives to support the private firms so that they can expand and when they expand, they can employ more, they can contribute more in taxes. And that is what government believes that can help going forward to meet these revenue issues and all the rest. Yeah. So I should take you back into the studio. A few things are confirmed and a few things we are beginning to learn that new taxes may be expected. But of course, George has said it, I said it earlier, that when it comes to budget matters, one hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes to the budget presentation, a few things can be pulled. And so you cannot confirm anything. But if anything we've had so far is anything to go by, some taxes are expected to go. The taxes on sanitary parts, a lot of people have made a lot of noise about it. And the expectation is that government is going to rejig it a little bit. We do not know in terms of how exactly that is going to be done. We are going to get confirmation very soon when the finance minister mounts the days. As you can see behind me, so many members of parliament have now taken their seat. The only thing left now is the finance minister to come in, for the speaker to come in and gavel the house in session. It's going to be a very light business today. The house is just going to deal with the matters of the, uh, the, the budget. Both leaders are going to comment on it and then they will call it a wraps. Tomorrow they'll do some business on Friday as well. Then Monday they'll come back to debate the key principles as have been outlined in the budget after the post-budget workshop, which will be held here in Parliament. So those are the key issues that have come. I've just seen the Executive Director of the National Cathedral, um, Paul Opokumens, are just coming in. So a lot more people are coming in. The Bank of Ghana governor is expect expected to come in any moment from now. His seat is there. The NPP chairman is here, Attorney General, other minister. So Aisha, take it over in the studio, but it's a, it's, a, it's a well, it's a chamber that is forming up. And very soon we expect Ken Furiata to begin his presentation on the 2024 budget to the Ghanaian public. Goku Asante is our parliamentary affairs correspondent and he's been doing this with George Riafe with some analysis from parliament and also painting a picture of what parliament looks like at the moment. The house is forming up, getting ready to receive the finance minister, Ken Furiata, who will be delivering the 2024 budget. And so you need to stay on the Joy News channel for our continuous coverage. Right about now, I'll be giving way for one Winston Amwa and his economic team who will be coming on to uh, do some analysis of the budget as we anticipate the coming in of the uh, Finance Minister Ken Furiata to deliver the budget. Do stay tuned in.